Hello. Um, for some reason, God has put this on my spirit. I don't know. Today, the Lord has been talking to me in, um, you know, so many ways. And I feel like um, somebody needs to uh, get this message. God says in his word that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. What does that mean? When we double-minded, the Bible tells us, he uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all all his ways. He he is like a seed tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And what double-mindedness does is take you out of your peace. Okay, so listen. In general, in order to stay in your peace, you gotta have a relationship with God. So that you know who he want in your life and who he don't want in your life. You get what I'm saying? Like if, if, if you in peace, don't try to change your life. You get what I'm saying? Not this false peace to the point where you just, you know, passive about everything. But I'm talking about if you in peace, don't try to change that because of what you hear. You got to stand on what God said. Okay. And many of us get, you know, get this concept twisted. We hear things like, say for instance, I could say something about a narcissist right now and somebody get looking, looking sideways at, you know, whoever in their circle. Okay. The, the, when you receive a word, it only applies to you when it applies to you and you know, it's true. It, when God is speaking to you, there will be a quickening in your spirit. It would be like, you just can't deny that this is a word from God concerning you because you will have a quickening in your spirit. And so this is, this is what I, 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 I would, this is what I'm trying to say. Listen, when, when God speaks to you, he will bring that peace. If a word is concerning you, it will bring you peace. If it's not concerning you, it will bring you disorder. And the thing is, when we on a faulty foundation, anyone can say anything. Listen, when we're double-minded, anyone can say anything and have us confused. God is not the author of confusion. You get what I'm saying? But when we're standing on God's word and we stand on what he said and we we, we just know in our, you know, with our whole heart that what you believe in God for, he said it. Then that's that on that. Don't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Don't, even when when I relay a message, don't go and you know, don't go and you know start getting out of your peace if you already in peace. Amen. And and I'm gonna say this like like stop accepting everything as for you. Listen to you know if you click on a message, take what you need, but don't disorganize your life or reorganize your life if God did not tell you to do so. You get what I'm saying? Because sometimes I feel like people who say they're prophets and teacher of the gospel, we have to be clear before we uh relay messages you get what i'm saying because sometimes people just put messages out there put messages out there and they don't let people know listen if it's not for you listen if you in peace and, and god has told you something then this word may not be for you but there may be somebody right now struggling with someone who's a wicked person you get what i'm saying if you listen, if <laughs> if you ain't dealing with no wicked people don't start you know looking at people cross-eyed because you 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 clicked on a message or you read something. Stay in your peace, okay? God says, be anxious about nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, let your requests be known in a peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding will guard your heart. And I think people need to understand about understand this concept about receiving words from people because sometimes, you know, because we don't have a relationship with God, we looking for for something and to the point where the, a person's words can literally tra change your entire trajectory. You, a person's words can literally get you off track. So this is what I'm saying, okay, to sum it all up. 
God says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Give me one second. Y'all looking at some oil right now. I got some anointed oil right here. Okay, James chapter uh, 1. Verses 8. Okay, let's start at verse 2. I'm sorry. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces per perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything if any of you lack lacks wisdom you should ask god who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you but when you ask you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind that person should not expect to receive anything from the lord such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do okay so when we ask for something for, for, uh, from the Lord. We got to stand on it. Don't get off of it. I'm sorry, you know, uh, this message is, is kind of choppy, but it came, you know, out of the blue. And I feel like I need to uh, relay this message. And it really can't wait because the Holy Spirit it has put a quickening, quickening in my spirit. The Holy Spirit has rested me right now. When God has told you something, okay, stand on what he has told you. Okay. Okay. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, people who, you know, believe in for weird stuff, like other people's spouses and stuff. I'm not talking about that. You get what I'm saying? I ain't talking about nothing perverse. You get what I'm saying? But I'm talking about what God, you and God have a relationship. He told you this. He told you what he wants you to do. Listen, stop looking for everybody to speak into your life. Okay, because if you don't have a firm foundation, that individual will be able to literally take you completely off the path that God wants you to be on because you have not been, you have not actually committed yourself to what God has told you. You get what I'm saying? But, and, and some of us have to be completely honest about this, okay? Many times, the only reason why we end up on track, the only reason why our exes can come back in and, and mess with our head, the only reason why people, old, old friends can come in and, 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 and drain us, you get what I'm saying, is because we don't know. We don't have a relationship with God. Or... We not really fully committed to what God has given us. Listen, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will stand. Don't take every word as for you. You get what I'm saying? You got to have a relationship with God. You got to stand on what he said. He is not changing. Okay. It's us who sometimes, who it's us who, who sometimes change. Okay. Stop taking everything that everybody say. Even when when I say a word, it may not apply to every everybody, everybody or you or you a person that's listening. But take what you need and and keep keep it moving. You get what I'm saying? And that's why we gotta have a relationship with God ourselves, so we're not here and there, here and there, here and there, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. That's why I only listen. I don't listen to too many people no more because it's gotten to the point where that chaos, when that chaos creep in, listen, God is God says, be anxious about nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, let your request be known. In the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard your heart. When that confusion is Step in, and when that chaos step in, you already know that's not of God. And now you looking sideways, you don't know up from down. You know why? Because you have not built a 
a firm foundation with what God has told you. You have not really, you don't really trust the people who are in your life in the first place. Let's just keep it, uh, keep it 100. And so this is why we have to go to the Lord. He said, if anyone asks, lacks wisdom, let them draw. Listen, let them ask. Listen, he, he didn't say let them ask apostle, preacher, pastor. He said, let them ask who? The Lord. God. If anyone of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. That means God ain't going to analyze your situation. God ain't going to uh, judge your situation by what, 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 what he, what he see physically. He's going to judge your situation by what, where he see you going. Listen, this is, this is, listen, this is why we need to trust in the Lord because he's Alpha Omega beginning and the end. He see way farther than we will ever see. And God always judges our situation by where we going and not where he see us at. And so if you listen, if God has given you a word, this, this is why, you know, Abraham uh, almost sacrificed Isaac. This is why uh, 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 Noah built the ark. Why? Because he had made up his mind. We got to make up our mind on what God told us. We got to make up our mind on the what, what God said that we would do. We got to make up our mind on who God said we are. And, and oftentimes, people can creep in and get us totally off track because what? We are not really truly committed to what God has placed in us. And, and this goes back to what I was saying in one of my last messages. Your harvest is fighting for you, okay? And I see this, listen, I see this for myself. Listen, the warfare that's been coming, I'm like, listen, I can't even tell y'all the dreams. It's like I'm going from level to level in my dreams. I'm seeing it. Like literally this morning, I had a dream that a bunch of people were running after me and I I had to hurry up and run to the elevator and go up. They, they, listen, listen, the race is not given to the swift. No, listen, God is so faithful. Okay. But you got to stand on what the, the mission and the assignment that he has called you to. You got to be like Jay who you can't be playing around. You can't be playing around. You got to be like, Jay, who? You got to be like, look, I see you. I see you. I see what you're trying to do. But guess what? I know what I got to do. Because, listen, God is a jealous God. I do not want to be displeasing in his eyes. I want to serve the Lord thy God with all my heart. I don't care what type of false prophets out here. I don't care what they send my way. I love God. I want to serve him. I love him. And if he sent me to somebody, I'm going to have to love them because that, that that's what my Lord say, says. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's how we need to be with God. Like, forsake this life. Stop trying to save your life and love God. And when you do for him, he'll do for you. And I'm seeing it with my eyes. When the enemy come in like the flood, I always push through by the power of the Holy Spirit. Devil, you are a liar. Listen, I'm starting to feel like uh, Denzel Washington in training day, like for real. <laughs> Y'all can't touch me. <laughs> but listen, that's how it is when you 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 rolling with, with Jesus. It's like a strip come over you, a confidence come over you, and you don't know where it came from. At one minute, you were struggling to stay afloat. Then all of a sudden, God, listen, God rewards those who diligently seek him. And when he see you continually putting your hands to what he told you because you believe in it, because you believe in the vision of God, because you believe in the word of God and what he said you, you would do. And when he told you not to give up and you didn't give up, Listen, God delights in that. He said without faith is impossible to please him. Many of us are over, over here trying to please everybody else. We over here trying to make sure man is satisfied. Trying to talk, talk, talk to them in a way that they'll receive us. Let me tell you something. People going to have a problem with, with everything. Listen, somebody out there is going to always have a problem. You can't please everybody. 
Okay? God says, trusting in man creates a snare. You can't please. You're going to make somebody upset one, one way or the, the other. You can't even please those of your own household. God said in the last days, a man's enemies will be those of his own household. And when you get an understanding that the flesh is faulty and and fleshly carnal people going to always have a problem with something because they're unsatisfied because they don't have the fulfillment of Christ who died for our sins, who came to make us whole. If you don't understand that they're faulty, You'll be sitting up here giving yourself away and, and bending and bowing down to demons instead of walking in the authority that God called you to. Stop being, bowing down to people's demons. Some people love the baby demons. And we sitting up here just, yeah, yeah trying to feed and bend to, to, to de demonic spirits. The devil is alive. Do what God called you to do. Have the spirit of Jehu in this season. And guess what? God will give you strength. God, the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up, like, mount up on wings like eagles. Wait on the Lord. Keep on coming. Keep on showing up. Even if, listen, even if you got to peep. Even if you got to, even if, if you got to peep, <laughs> keep on showing up for the things of God. And guess what? God will reward you. Why? Because you're diligent. That's what the book of Pro Proverbs. Let's see. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me one second, y'all. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to advantage, but everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. Okay? Let's see if there's another one. Verse, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his words, and the deeds of a man's hands will return. Come on. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. In all labor there is profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Okay? Proverbs chapter 31, verse 17. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. Okay? You got to put your hand to the plow and you cannot look back. You got to keep on going, keep on going. And many people get this uh, scripture uh, twisted. They think, you know, God's talking about the rapture when he said one will be in the field and then one will be taken away. Some people will fall away, but some people will stay in the field. Okay. One will be grinding the meal. Listen, if you think about it, the field in the meal, grinding the meal are things of God. They are representations of things of God. Okay? What does a meal make? Uh, bread. It, it, it grinds grain. Okay? In the field. What does God always tell us? Stay in his field. Okay? But many will fall away in the last days. But when you keep on going... And you keep your hand to the plow and you don't look back. Guess what? God rewards those. So don't get weary in well doing. And be careful what you allow into you. Stand on what God called you to do. Stand on what God has said to you. Amen. And if you believe in, in, in perversion and stuff like that, listen, to each his own, that's on you. But I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Okay? Allow God, come on, to, to, to plan, plan what he wants to do in your life. Come into agreement with his will. Some of us make up our own vision for our life and that ain't even God. God ain't even in it. But when you put your hands to what God has committed you to do, Guess what? He will reward you. He will reward you for diligently seeking him, for diligently 
serving him, for diligently denying yourself and giving yourself to others. People may not understand what you do. People may, you know, even get mad at what you do at times. That's just life. That's just how people are. They may get mad at what you do at times. They'll understand why you do what you do. But at the end of the day, listen, if you do what God called you to do, you will rise. He will exalt you in due time. You will rise. I don't know what your exaltation is going to look like. Shoot, I don't even know what mine's going to look like. But I just know that I love the Lord. And we all need to have that mindset. God, we're not worried about the riches and, and the end point. We want to serve you right now. We want to, and we don't want to hurry up and get to the end point that we miss the wisdom. We miss the, the steps that need to be taken or the uh, knowledge need to be gained in the midst of us getting to where we're going. Some of us get too excited about the end point and we are literally in chaos and anxious because we're looking too far ahead. Don't do that. Okay? Be anxious. God says, don't worry about tomorrow. We don't need to worry about tomorrow because uh, tomorrow has enough problems within itself. Many of us, we have came under attacks and the enemy was looking at us and, 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 and you, 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 some of us literally, you, you, literally flopping around like a fish out of water and the enemy looking at us hoping we will fail, hoping that we will take our last breath and die. But guess what? Greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. God says the righteous will fall seven times, but they'll rise again. Okay? You may have people trying to tear down what, what God has called you to do. You may have people coming up against what the, 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 the truth of the word of God. Because, because they know what you came to do. But you need to understand that greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. We are still in the land. We have entered in. I'm talking about the true, true remnant. Okay? I'm talking about the true remnant. I'm not talking about these false people who are wolves in sheep's clothing. I'm talking about true remnant. Remnant. You have entered in. You are eating the fruit of the land. Okay? And God is about to bring power upon us. Yes, we may have gotten frustrated. Yeah, we may have grown weary, but we kept on going. And God has tested us. He has tested what he has placed in us. The enemy thought that he could win. But God is giving you a fresh anointing. Why? Because when you were in lack, when you were in little, when you didn't know how you was going to make it, you still pour it out. Wait, baby. You still pour it out. I'm going to be in there in a minute. What's up? Mommy, I wanted the game. What, baby? I wanted the game. Okay, go. You still pour it out. And because you still pour it out, guess what? That oil that will never run dry. That bread will never go out. Many people will be searching for the, the word of God. I mean, I'm telling you, in these last days, the word of God is going to be so scarce. Scarce that people going to be digging holes in the ground. This is what the Bible was talking about. I don't even have my Bible in front of me. I did not even expect to, 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 to talk this long. And I'm going to post this for daily bread on what's, what's, what's today. I'm going to post this as a, a daily bread on Thursday, but listen, the word of God and the anointing is going to be so scarce in the last days. The truth going to be so scarce in the last days that people going to be digging holes in the ground trying to find water. Okay? That's how scarce it's going to be. That's why God said, when you hear my voice, take heed. Because there'll come a time where people ain't going to hear God. And, and matter of fact, the famine has already started. But because there's so many people talking and people eat junk food, they think that it's the word of God when it's not. That's why in the last days, everything that was, listen, everything is going to be tested by fire. 
So I don't know about you, but I'd rather not hear what my itchy ears want to hear. Even though you may be tempted at times, I would love the truth and, 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 and want the truth with all my mind, body, heart, soul, and spirit. Why? Because there are times that's coming on this world that many people don't talk about that will test what, listen, will test your sanity, will test what you've been building upon the rock. And if it's worthless, if you have not submitted a good sacrifice like Abel, okay, you will receive the mark. Okay? What you eat matters. If somebody always telling you coming against the truth, not listen, you already know they false. Cause listen, the truth don't need to be refuted. Listen, if, listen. If somebody always got something to say about the true word of God, if I go into scripture and point something out, this is what the Bible say, they false already. Because they're always, a false person is always trying to walk, work them, work around the truth. Like, why can't you just take it for what it is? But because they are double-minded, they have to do that. Why? Because they want to make amends. They want to make excuses for certain things. I can't do that. Why? Because the Holy Spirit won't allow me to do that. The Holy Spirit is so deep in, in me, and, and I'm not boasting. This is only the 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 the, the Holy Spirit that get the, the 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 Lord Jesus Christ get that can do this for me. But the Holy Spirit is so adamant in me that I can't just go out here and be no any kind of way. When I hear truth, oh, I'm convicted. But some people have gotten to the point where they feel like they can work the cut around the word, work work around the word. They always trying to refute truth, and that's why it's disorder. Because there are wolves in sheep's clothing. That are trying to steer people away from holiness. The true sound doctrine of God. We got to submit ourselves as a living sacrifice. Okay. Test every spirit. Stand on what God called you to do. Don't step out of your peace. Because you receive a word. That just shows that you're not really standing. Or committed to what God called you. It has been so much warfare but i kid you not i see 12 12 again i love when i see that let me show you what it means to me okay god is going to bring your zeal back amen Be joyful, Romans 12, 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Amen? Amen. You got to stay strong. Because the enemy is prowling around like a warring lion seeking someone to devour. God says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. He said... Listen, he said when a man man's ways pleases him, he'll make his enemies even be at peace with him. I kid you not, my children can vouch for me. Other people can't. I'm not even trying to uh, sit here and boast. But we we be getting in the word. Some listen, we be getting in the word every time I get in the word. The heavens start opening up physically. So you know if it's being done physically, it's happening spiritually. Okay? The sky, the clouds start moving away. These chemtrails, because they are demonic spirits in them, that's how I know they got demonic spirits in them. Because every time we, we prophesy in this home, 
there will literally be an open heaven right above us. And guess what they'll do? It's like they they standing on standby and they'll go, you know, chemtrails right across where uh where it's open at, trying to cover up the sky. But that's how I know that whatever they spray in, in the sky is demonic. Because the spirit of truth attacks that thing. You don't understand how powerful you are. We up here, listen, we so worried about things that we stepping out of our authority. We don't even know how powerful we are because we so focused on things and carnal things. God says that he's where I have given you authority over demons, ability to heal the sick and power to raise the dead. God is releasing a fresh anointing and when the remnant rise up, we gonna be doing things that the world has not seen. Don't get disheartened by what you see people doing. Yes, some people are are ignorant, but keep on keeping on. Don't grow weary and well doing. And continue to ask God to create within you a clean heart and to continue to pour in you. Receive your fresh fire in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you are awesome. You are worthy to be praised. You are a mighty God. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. God, there is none other like you, God. You are the Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end, God. And we just thank you, God. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you, God. We didn't even know we was in bondage. Hallelujah. But now that you have awakened us to the truth, God, we, ha we hate bondage. We hate being ensnared by the snares of the enemy. God, continue to free us, God. Release us, God, in the name of Jesus from every chain that is keeping us caged, that is keeping us from exalting your name, that is keeping us, hallelujah, buried. Hallelujah. We shall rise in the name of Jesus because greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. Satan, we rebuke you. Get behind us. Hallelujah. We come with the fresh fire of the Holy Spirit. We come with the word of God, the word of truth in the name of Jesus. Let every man be a liar. God be the truth. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Father God, let your truth come forth in the name of Jesus. Every prophet of Baal in the name of Jesus trying to whitewash your truth, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, cut out that, that serpent tongue by the power of the Holy Spirit and pour into them a new spirit in the name of Jesus because God is doing a new thing. Hallelujah. And we shall perceive it. Open our eyes, Father God. Let the anointing hit us like a fire. Put a fire in our belly in the name of Jesus. Let us prophesy truth. Let the anointing be so strong that everybody around us start walking in truth. That everybody around us get convicted that they want to fix their ways by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we give you glory in advance in the name of Jesus. For you are a great God and a mighty God. And you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are a great God. You are amazing. And we exalt your holy name. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Shalom.